Greetings, welcome to a new video. In this video we will discuss the Schmidt trigger circuit in the inverting configuration. We will see how we can calculate for this specific circuit the component values for our threshold voltages which is called the high and the low threshold voltage. Of course we will work out everything step by step in our calculations and verify these in SPI simulations. Okay, before we jump to the actual example let's first discuss the operation principle briefly. We will have a positive feedback in our Schmidt trigger and that is then in general shown here. What we see is that we have a voltage division here which is then fed back from the output to the non-inverting input so we will have now a positive feedback. It is now having two states which is then going in this fashion where you have the ball let's say at this maximum value. If this is a really small change here at the inputs then it can go that way so it is actually the lower or the upper stage of the output. So we have two states in our output voltage. This is also called the bistable situation. Now if you have an ample wire with a positive feedback as shown here and the loop gain is larger than one, this circuit can then be unstable. But we can make it or create a quasi-stable operation if we limit the outputs. We will have two states which are still stable. Now the resistive values can create here a voltage division, so by voltage divided rule, and we will create or establish what we call the threshold voltages, depending on of course also the output voltage. And that depends on how you power your operational amplifier. Now if the output has only two extreme states, as said, then we have two or bistable operation. So those are now the two states and it is also called the bistable states. Now the circuit characteristics, in this case where we discussed the inverting Schmidt trigger, you see here there is input voltage which is going in the inverting node and we will always have a feedback to the positive or the non-inverting input of our operational amplifier. Now the characteristics for the input versus the output is shown here. We will have a threshold voltage high and we will have two states as shown here. By stable we have the maximum and the minimum states of our output voltage. So we will see if this threshold is reached to a higher value, let's say 5 volts, then your output, which is at this high stage, will then drop to the low stage. So if you see your high stage, you go down. And if you see your low uh, threshold voltage, you go actually from the low stage to high stage. So this is actually the characteristic of an inverting Schmidt trigger. Now when you overlap this together, you will now have the complete plot and this is now a very general plot where you see in the Schmidt trigger circuits. In the formula form, for our threshold voltage is high, we can create now this formula. This is pretty straightforward from the circuit. If you look at the circuit, you see at this V plus node that there is a voltage division R1 over R1 plus R2 times the voltage here, which is always one of the states. In this case a Vmax for the threshold. In a similar case for a threshold low, we have the VTL, which is the lower threshold voltage, and then using the V minimum instead of V maximum. In this case, we see here the threshold voltage is also designated, and this region we call the hysteresis or the part where we have a division between the higher and the lower threshold voltage. Now, why do we have a hysteresis? Now, if you have a simple comparator. So there is no hysteresis in this circuit. You see here the comparator in a very really simple format. You have here a reference voltage, let's say 2 volts, and you compare it with your input voltage which is changing. Now what happens now in the circuit? Now if your reference voltage is here, let's say again 2 volts, and your signal is this blue line which is corrupted by noise or some interference, then your output is then triggering all the time because of these small changes here at the reference voltage. So it is really sensitive to very small changes. So that means noise added to the input can cause unwanted transitions in the output and those are of course not what we want. So how can we then eliminate this repeated or unwanted transitions? Now we can create what we call the hysteresis, sort of a region for safety in order to avoid this repeated triggering. 
Now in this case again our inverting Schmidt trigger circuit where we see here now the, uh, the circuit configuration and where you have again here a similar signal which is corrupted by noise or some interference. Now we have now not only one level but two levels here. So we see the threshold high and threshold low. So we can still make the transition from the low stage to high stage or from the high stage to low stage of the output but now it goes in a smaller region, a different region, which is not a big zigzag, some part, but is in this case separated. And now we have here the threshold high and threshold low, which goes to maximum and the minimum, depending on, of course, what your threshold voltages are. If you have a non-inverting Schmidt trigger, then this circuit will then, at threshold high, will then flip to from the negative to the positive state. For the low threshold voltage it will then uh, switch from the high stage to the low stage of your output voltage. Let's see now our actual example. We have here the Schmidt trigger circuit given with the output limits already given for this circuit of plus and minus 10 volts. And we'd like to design a lower threshold voltage minus 2 volts and a higher threshold voltage of plus 2 volts. So how do we work this out? Okay, let's look at our calculations first. We will use for this circuit the OP1, the operational amplifier, as a TL081. That's the type we are going to use. And we will see later in the simulation result what it means for our operational amplifier, how to power it up. Okay, now again, the output limits here given V max plus 10 volts and V minimum minus 10 volts. So we know what the formula is for our lower threshold voltage for this circuit that is given by this expression. So we have now here the V threshold low is equal to the, again, the voltage division times the minimum value of our out output voltage and the similar case for our high threshold voltage. Okay, now we know that the VTL, which is our lower threshold voltage is minus two volts. And we also know that our minimum output voltage, so the low state is minus 10. So we can just substitute here and we have this expression. In a similar case, we can do that for this equation. Now what you see is these two equations are actually effectively the same because R1 over R1 over plus R2 is 1 over 5 because these two minus signs will cancel each other out and that is exactly the same here. So what you have is by setting up these two equations, let's say or two settings, we get actually exact same equation. So it means we have two unknowns still, R1 and R2, we need to calculate, but only one equation. So we need to select one of the unknowns or select the value for one of the unknowns in order to proceed. Select the value of R1, which is just really arbitrary. And I will take here setting R1 is equal to one kilo ohm. Now if this is one kilo ohm, I need to still have one over five as a ratio. That means this R2 must be then four times as R1 will be then 4 kilo ohms. So that's actually the result and we have now found the required component values for our design. So our picture will be then like so as discussed earlier. So we have now our input versus the output characteristics and you see here the blue line which is going here from the high stage to the low stage at this threshold voltage which is in this case 2 volts high and then going back which is not at the exact, exact the same place going up but later in order to avoid that repeated triggering which is then at minus 2 volts which is then the threshold low and then going from the low stage to the high stage okay now let's see what we need to do for this circuit if this is really in built so in the simulator it's a little bit different and i will show you what happens so this is the simulator circuit you see here again the 4 kilo ohm and 1 kilo ohm we have calculated. This is our input voltage and we measure here at the output, the output voltage. Now you see here that I put here the VCC, that's the positive power supply, and the VEE is our negative power supply, which is not plus 10 and minus 10 volts, but it's a little bit higher. It's 11.6 and also here 11.6. So why do I do that? Now in order to uh, overcome the uh, let's say the losses in your operational amplifier circuit, you also need to put more power supply energy or voltage in order to come at the values you want at the output. So if you do here plus and minus 10 volts, plus and minus 10 volts, you probably get only 8.5. 
So this is actually what you need to do. So you need to overcome that losses by adding approximately 1.5 to 2 volts, depending on the operational amplifier again, and then to get the required output limit. So this is done just to overcome these losses in the operational amplifier circuit. Now this is the plot we have. The blue line is our output voltage and the red is our input voltage. The input voltage here is a triangular wave with a 3 volts peak at 100 hertz. So you see actually that this is going up, down, up, down and it, create, it has a maximum of 3 volts and minimum of minus 3 volts. The reason to do that is you can then see clearly what's happening. In this case I see here also the label for my maximum and the minimum value of my output voltage and that together is not exactly plus and a minus 10 volts, this is plus 9.95 and minus 9.95 volts. Still very close so we have a really small error approximately 50 millivolts so we can lay with that for most practical purposes. We also see that the higher threshold and the lower threshold is also designated here. You see that also from the label. It is at 2 volts for the higher and a minus 2 volts for the lower. So this is also exactly as we wanted. So we achieved our goal and design is in this case completed. All right, this was our example considering the schmidt trigger circuit in the inverting configuration. We have used the positive feedback to create the bistable states. We have two and two threshold voltages as shown here. We have designed the resistor values and we have discussed why we need a higher DC power supply for our operational amplifier to compensate for the losses in our operational amplifier. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.